This is a video presentation uh, by me, Mari Taishala, and uh, it relates to a dissertation by Jackson Chris Brown. Um, so this is an outline of um, some of the topics that were covered in his dissertation. Um, so the problem statement uh, mainly related to whether or not non-traditional students gain more from web-based education. Because for the traditional students who are younger, um, they are usually acquainted with technology. They don't have so many strings, for example, the jobs. Uh, they don't have strings of um, marriage. They don't have kids. So basically, um, he was trying to investigate whether non-traditional students gain from it, whether they like it, or even if it makes sense to them. So among um, the supports for the problems, he looked at the ineffectiveness of affirmative action and the purpose of this quantitative casual comparative study was to determine if and to what extent age, gender, and internet experience affect these non-traditional adult learners' perception of web-based learning in online and sometimes hybrid courses. So this was all just in the United States. So um, the background, um, he had gone through that same system as a non-traditional student and had difficulty determining whether or not um, it was beneficial. And I think at first he had trouble using it. So my reason for choosing it, um, it's because of the changes in education and currently due to the COVID aftermath, we see that although kids are having in-person learning, we are still posting assignments on Google Classroom because it's easier. We are still, like for my school, we are still using the Plus portal because we don't want to write out the grade. We are still using Google Forms because it's easier to grade. So just as it's becoming normal to us educators, uh, most institutions are adopting it. Uh, we see many schools getting Chromebooks and the like. So historically, this distance learning first began with the use of printed instructions to early broadcasting systems to what is currently referred to as online learning. So in addition, um, it improved instruction and um, it helped to make life easier, especially for the ADHD students. And uh, it became also convenient for those who needed distance education. Um, so the research questions that he looked at the first one was to what extent is there as a statically significant mean difference between students age and their perception of web-based learning in online hybrid college courses the second one was to what extent um, was there a statistically significant mean difference between students' gender and their perception of web-based learning? And lastly, to what extent was it in relation to um, their age and distance from school? So some of the theoretical frameworks included expectation state theory 
uh, social presence theory, the number of students who are present, and then the technology acceptance model. How many people were willing to take in the technology and actually use it all the time for education purposes? Um, so the research method and design, he applied the qualitative study um, and used the seven-step modified Van Kahn process. Um, he also used the inductive approach to emphasize the concern of the richness, texture, and feeling of the raw data collected. And then he also used um, the qualitative casual method. So uh, the results that he gained are related to a survey that learners had to complete and um, it was to help see the difference between those who were um, completely online and those who had the hybrid option. So data was collected by using convenience sampling from the target population of non-traditional students with a final sample of 187 participants. So with the social constructism, um, social presence and the technology acceptance models were also used to guide the study. And they also carried out interviews face-to-face uh, -face, um, to ensure that they um, got a better view of how these people felt depending on their facial expressions. So uh, the data was managed um, using free and recording, um, searching for specific words and then the matrix query. And then uh, he also used um, the nodes that help to create the sets of attributes. So with the data analysis, um, just like we noted, um, he used the seven step process um, and it helped him achieve the patterns that a certain group of students or a certain sex uh, preferred technology more than the other. He looked at the themes um, in terms of place, in terms of job availability, um, in terms of um, whether they were traditional or non-traditional. And then he looked at the meanings in the participants' responses because some of them um, weren't clear if they preferred online or hybrid. Um, so this is the conceptual framework. And then the findings um, accepted the null hypothesis for ages um, between um, students um, many of them were found especially those who were below 21 to prefer online experience and uh, it's that same age group that had internet experience so the females were found to be more attracted towards um, technology and preferred to like do their work while they are in the bed or somewhere else. So these findings were used to also inform higher education leaders of the best practices concerning web-based courses. 
And so they study advanced scientific knowledge in the field of adult education. Although many studies have been written about the learning outcomes associated with web-based learning and some perceptions of web-based learning, there is still that gap. Brown found that there is still that gap regarding how non-traditional adult learners perceive web-based learning in terms of age, gender, and internet experience. So the first limitation was that the researcher couldn't conclude with certainty or certainty what affected the independent variable of age and how it became casual. So the other limitation was related to the comparative study. He couldn't conclude um, if the groups deferred because some younger students uh, wished they were non-traditional students or some felt like they were forced by their parents to, you know, go to college, but they would have wanted to wait or go and work and then come back. And they would have preferred that while they were away from school, they had the option to do stuff online. So the result of the study provides insight into opportunities for future research and practice. And um, he concluded that age, gender, and internet experience affect not only non-traditional adult learners' perception of web-based learning, but it also affects the higher education institutions in general because he found out that um, teachers also had their own view on the usage of technology. He made several recommendations um, to higher education teachers, institution, and students, and provided ways on how um, web-based learning could be used to yield better results for both the teacher and the learners. And these are the so Okay.